Hi guys and girls, Gallifrey Forever 97 and welcome to today's Dot 2 action figure review. Today I'll be reviewing another B&M set which has been released as part of a massive range for 2019 and it's the two Doctors Collectors figure set which includes Perry from that story, the second Doctor the Androgum and also the final classic Sontaran figure we need to complete the range, which is Greek Marshall Stike. This figure is also a new head sculpt, given as a second one. Uh, we also had Harry Sullivan previously. In all honesty, this set was probably amongst the ones I was highly anticipated for. But what do I think about having it in hand? We have to watch this review to find out. So first I'm going to go through the packaging. Starting from the front of the packaging, we've got the Dot2 logo, 5 Plus logo in the top right corner. We'll circle the top right corner as well, telling us what figures are in the set, which says it includes the second Doctor, Purple Gideon Brown, uh, as I didn't just go for Perry, and also obviously Group Marshall Stike. We've got the TARDIS 3D design going down the left hand side, limited edition gold silver sticker, which is seen on all these sets. I don't know if that's meant to be kind of like a more of a draw in. Uh, for fans to buy these, but they're not that limited edition. Bottom left, we've got the set's cool, which is the two Doctors Collector figure set. In the bottom round corner, it tells us what series these figures are a part of, and also below that, we've got the character options logo. Left hand side of the box, has got Dot 2 logo, the 3D tire design, and tell us what the set's called. Right hand side, we've got Dot 2 logo again, with three promotional photos of the figures again, telling us what these figures are called. At the top, same information we've seen, but with the character options online website. At the bottom, we've got more information about the sets, a little technical jargon including copyright stuff and barcodes. And finally on the back, same information we see on the front, but we've getting the same promotional photos that we saw on the right hand side. With no information on the story, which would have been a nice thing to put in, maybe shuffling all the figures to the left and having a section about the story that these figures come from. But without further ado, Let's get these three figures open. Now the figures out of the packaging. The background is the same as we've got with the other three packs with this white graphic design, which I think was really well, defining the figures more when glancing them from outside of the box. So the first figure I'm gonna be reviewing is Perry, then I'll be going on to the second Doctor, and then lastly reviewing Stike. And here is Perry from her outfit from the two Doctors. For someone who's been collecting these figures for years, we come to know Perry quite a lot. She's had three releases before this, but I think this is probably one of the best figures that they've done of Perry. There is kind of one issue, which as you may know about or not, but I'll talk about when I go into it. But first of all, let's take a look at the articulation. So the head can go side to side. You'll probably do the full 360, but I don't want the collar to sort of scratch the neck. The waist can do the full 360. The arms can do the full 360 as well. 360 sort of at the biceps, up and down at the joint. Uh, the arms can also do a full 360 as well. The legs can go back and forth, up and down at the joint. And the high heel shoes are sculpted to the foot. Kicking off the detail with the head. Now, I'll be doing a comparison to the other pair of figures later on. It has more like shade to her face, which I think works really well. But obviously the original sculpt is amazing. It's a really great likeness to Nicole Bryant, uh, which I did actually see this past weekend at the BFI screening of Mind Warp. Obviously you can see the headband has been painted on. It's kind of this pink base. Uh, with different colours of green, yellow and blue, with a fringe kind of covering up some of it, but they have pages around it. Uh, but it's a really nice feature, which saves them time, obviously, sculpting a uh, headband. The paint works really, really well. So the body is based on the Caves of Anjadani release, with this really nice pink undercoat, with this gold tint going around, which has this really nice pattern. Now onto the arms. So in the story, Perry has a short sleeve shirt, and the Cave of Anjadani version is long sleeves. So they've actually retooled the hands and made them longer to give that kind of deceiveness of it being short sleeved, which does work at a glance. However, when you see later on, comparing it to the other Perry figures, this figure is like an elongated version of her arms. As I think the original only literally comes up to like just past here, so obviously you think they've just literally extended them. But I think once you know it's there, which I'm sorry if I ruined the illusion for you, you know it's there. I kind of get what they were going for. It does work on an odd glance. Um, but obviously compared to the others, it is a bit inaccurate. But based on the budgets probably for these sets, I think they've done the best they can. Going on to the shorts, exact same colour scheme as the original release, 
of this figure from Vengeance and Varos with the light blue shorts uh, with the red belt and yellow key ring. Going down of course you've got her legs and then you've got her high heels which are this kind of dirty white wash which the running around she does in the story uh, in the sand I think is a great kind of colour tone to represent that. And here we have Perry amongst all the other releases with a version from the Kezanjani, Vengeance and Varos an attack of the Cybermen. As you can see, the arms now are quite visible to being sort of overly long compared to the previous releases. But in all honesty, I think it's one of my favourite outfits. The first two from Attack and Vengeance are pretty basic, but this, along with the Case of Anjani outfit, has more detail. And I think the paint applications on the new Perry version really highlight the sculpt very, very nicely. Now to the second figure of this set, which is the second Doctor, the Androgen version. This is an interesting variant. When they said the second Doctor was going to be part of this new uh, wave of B&M sets, I think this was the go-to figure. Now, at a quick glance, this is based on the 13th Doctor set version from the two Doctors, as we got that from that story. However, there is some completely different paint applications compared to this version, not just the blatant porridge eyebrows. But before we go into detail, let's take a look at the articulation. So the head can do the side to side, my version is quite stiff, uh, but yeah, don't do it all the way around, obviously you'll uh, scratch the neck. The arms can do the full 360, 360 at the biceps, up and down at the joints. The hands can do the full 360, Obviously one's quite into the uh, coat, so it's quite hard to sort of grab it. The waist can do the full 360 as well, back and forth at the joints, 360 swivel movement, uh, back and forth at the joint in the middle, and the shoes are sculpted to the trousers. So starting off with the head for detail, and of course it's a more defined version of Patrick Chowton, as in the story, it was set in the 80s, shortly before he died sadly, and obviously it's an older version of the second Doctor. But in the story he didn't actually dye his hair, so obviously we've got the grey hair with black highlights going around, which seems like it's just kind of been scrapped on, um, it doesn't seem like it's been sort of put on that well to be honest but i think it works you've got the traditional expression of patrick troughton with of course the eyebrows being painted a bright orange in the story it kind of has a more of a differentiation between his normal version and the androgen version with his massive silver top hat and kind of warts um, on the face which would be ideal i'm sure somebody will do custom figure of that uh, but for this obviously it just is a simple repaint but if you never ever got your chance to get a patrick troughton figure just paint the eyebrows back if you want a normal version. But if you've not seen the story out of context, you probably think this might be a paint mistake. But as an androgram, it's simple, it works. On to outfit, of course it is a traditional Patrick Troughton outfit. Starting with the bow tie, which is like a dark blue with white spots. The shirt has white buttons with a really extremely light blue uh, colour. Oh, I've got the black jacket which got buttons and the big pockets on the left hand side and the right hand side at the bottom. Got his handkerchief sticking out which is this dark red and oak green colour. The trousers are a really nice in sync design. We've got this light oak green colour as the undercoat with white stripes going all the way around uh, with these blue checkered spots uh, going down as well which gives this really nice effect. And the shoes are just being painted a light brown. Comparing this release to the original two, obviously there are some sort of changes which are quite notable. The bow tie is exactly the same for all three figures. Uh, I say the two Doctors version of the shirt is more accurate to the original second Doctor from Tomb of the Cybermen. All the trousers have kind of these white squares going across, but obviously with this new version has this added layer of blue stripes going across. This release also has the brown shoes, which the others don't. They have more of a black, lighter paint application. And the obvious big one, uh, is that they both come with their recorders, but this new version does not. And finally comparing it to the 13 Doctor set version, which is the same figure but without the orange eyebrows, but the paint applications for the hair are different, with white highlights compared to black. There's a slight differentiation uh, with the shirt, and also the handkerchief has been painted more of a lighter red with yellow, compared to this one, which is a dark red uh, with an oak green. The trousers are basically the same, uh, but with the blue lines, they have this double line going across, with the original version, but this one has a single bloom checkered version. And the shoes in the 13th Doctor version are a dark brown, this one is a light brown. On to the final figure now of this three pack set, which is Grand Marshal Stike, which is a figure I thought we kind of long lost seen. Back in the day, we got a release of all this classic Sontarans apart from the Sontarans from the two Doctors. Now, I don't know if that was because they needed to kind of re sculpt the figure to make it taller. And then when the kind of natural decline of the figure started to happen, I thought this was long since gone. 
However, we had Harry Sullivan, which is a new head sculpt using old body parts. And this in the same vein with using a new head sculpt of Stike, but using the old body of the Sontarans with a few kind of paint applications to convince you <laughs> that is the Sontaran of the story. But more about that in a bit. So let's first of all take a look at the articulation. The head can go from side to side. Um, I wouldn't do the full 360 because it really is tense, it might snap off. Uh, the arms do the full 360 around. There is bicep movement, but you can only kind of move it slightly because the chest popping out so much. Back and forth at the joints, 360 hand movement. The waist can do the full 360. Uh, the legs can go back and forth, 360. Biceps back and forth at the joint and the feet are stationary. So off the head with the new head sculpt, which looks absolutely fantastic. A really amazing likeness uh, to the sculpt from that store. It's a very unique design. The eyes really sell it, which are kind of really big, but have the really small pupils. The eyebrows have been painted on with yellow, uh, and there's also yellow beard as well, but I think they've actually slightly sculpted it a bit more. It's kind of those like, bigger hairs of the chin. Uh, stick out. Going around you've got the ears, don't read that much detail on the back, just a kind of standard as a Torrin uh, head sculpt, there's no extra detail on the back. But similar I think to how they actually do it on the show, I think they've only just sculpted this new bit and the ears and as you can see it's like been put on which they actually do with us on Torrens on the show. And before we get to mention, got the probrick vent at the back of the neck. This figure kind of has the opposite problem to Perry, with that obviously the body is shorter than what it is on the show. But obviously they've just used the old Sontarian classic sculpts, which is fine, I think it does work. But they have done some minor changes using paint applications uh, to give us a more accurate look to the story. So all the shoulder pads and knee pads have gone, and they've been painted with this brown and the silver top and bottom, which saves them, you know, doing a new sculpt for, for that. The belt apparently was fitter in the story, so they've just painted it more black, uh, to kind of make it more slimmer instead of actually removing it. So even though it's painted black, you can obviously still see the gridding. The communicator, of course, has been painted to match the colour scheme in the story. The shoes have been painted brown as well, and you've still got his gun holder, but sadly no gun accessory. Although it doesn't come with the gun accessory, he does come with his helmet, which is based on the Lynx helmet from the Time Warrior, uh, but the eyes have been painted black. The silver dots kind of portraying the arrow were originally there, uh, but they've actually painted this silver pattern uh, on that and also the top of the helmet with an arrow going down. Which looks a bit like a ship actually. <laughs> and as you can see now, Stike goes really nicely with the other classic Sontarans. It is really nice to actually complete the line of classic Sontarans, which I thought we'd never actually see. We may actually see the other Sontaran from the two Doctors someday down the line. I think it is slightly different. But now they've actually done the sculpt for Stike, only be a slight differentiation between the two, so they could do a re-release. So my overall thoughts on the set, well I think this is probably one of the best sets that they've done this year, with the most variation. This is probably my favourite release of Perry that they've done so far. Shame about the long arms, but I think they've got away with it just. The second Doctor is a nice opportunity if you missed out on the 13 Doctor set version, but I think they could have obviously done a top hat and the actual spots on the face as well. Obviously that would cost more money. And of course, the Sontaran Stike is a must. It's an amazing sculpt. Kudos to the sculptors who've done this because it's really accurate to the two Doctors, even though it's a bit shorter than his on-screen counterpart. So I hope you enjoyed this review, guys and girls. Please comment, like, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Links to that in description below. What are your thoughts on the two Doctors collectors set? What's your favourite figure from this set? All your thoughts, let me know in the comment section below. I have two more reviews inbound for the B&M set. The next will be the 7th Doctor Collector set, which is the 7th Doctor and the Silver Nemesis Cybermen. And then the final one will be the 4th Doctor and TARDIS once I get my hands in it, hopefully someday soon. But if you're not yet, please subscribe not to miss any videos, including Doctor B&M reviews, trailers and other reviews. So as always, guys and girls, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!